Hello, Lorenzo here. Welcome back to Galileo Contracting, episode 2. This episode, we've got two submissions, so if we've got time, we're going to fly two craft. On the pad here is the Igla, submitted by Dubrovnik Contracting. That's a name I made up from the email heading. If you want to have like a name for your uh, space space agency entity, you can, uh, you can submit that, otherwise I'm going to keep making things up. This one apparently is able to reach a moon, and we're going to attempt that by launching and eyeballing a launch trajectory, an insertion trajectory to this moon. We're carrying some science payload for a landing, which we're going to save for just that, and we're bringing Valentina as a pilot. I think that's um, all we need for mission planning. Oh yeah, there it, there was a warning like scribbled on these boosters, like there's no fins, be careful. Uh, I reckon we will. Anyway, here we go, launching the rocket. There we go, that seems nominal. The boosters are doing their thing. I don't dare tip over too much, but then again, I also need all the efficiency I need, because I don't know this solar system that well. I don't know the margins I need. I don't know how much delta V I'm going to need for a return. So we're going to, going to gently pitch over to, to get into an equatorial orbit, by the way, I am recording this live, as I will probably do for most of these episodes. It's easier that way, and I can squeeze them in between the editing for the KSP Next series. And also, the solar system, I don't think it's that big. It's like it's comparative to um, the, the stock solar system in size. So the burns and the planning shouldn't take prohibitively long. If this changes, of course, I will uh, consider editing it. So. No worries. Anyway, here we have the first stage burnout, separating those boosters away. Hopefully we cleared the launch pad enough to not destroy it. Um, although the the odds of well anything hitting there is are really low. This rocket is really long by the way, holy shit. This this liquid engine can only just power it. Let's have a look what it's how it's made. We're over 15 kilometer mark now, so we can turn over a little bit more aggressively. There shouldn't be too much air in the way. Let's see, we've got fuel tanks up to... We've got a lot of fuel tanks, and here we're going to switch to a lander engine. And that that's it. This is, this whole thing has got to land. Whoa, that's going to be a challenge. I reckon that's, that's the only way um, it could have been made to work, though. Because I did upgrade the launch pad, but not the vehicle assembly building. Not enough, anyway. Because it's still only uh, allowing 30 parts. So we've got a higher weight limit, a higher mass limit now, but not the, um, not the higher part limit. So hopefully... Oh, snap! I didn't accept any contracts again. That's that's not going to help with the money for the upgrades. Snap! Um, oh, well, nothing to be done about that. Now, if we do stick a landing, we can we can check out the contract building to see if we, if we can return some science from, from the moon. But that's getting way ahead of ourselves at this point. Oh, I really got to remember to accept those contracts once in a while. Anyway, I think this insertion is going pretty well. We're about halfway there speed-wise. And let's look ahead. Is there a moonrise that we can spot? Not as of yet. So it is going to be a, a proper orbital insertion first, I would reckon. What do we have in the way of kit? We've got a thermometer. This one should... Yeah, we already have that one, obviously. Uh, we have some batteries. We should probably keep them for transmissions. Although I don't think we've got an antenna. Then we'll just keep them for spacecraft operations and life support. Sounds good as well. And we've got two materials bays. Two goo canisters. That's going to be for surface and space around the moon. And we've got pressure sensors and a thermometer. Yeah. So those we can we can just collect willy-nilly. Now I feel we're, we are at 50 kilometers. That's still inside the atmosphere. But we're almost at orbital speed. Our apoapsis is is just 50. Maybe we should ascend a little bit more. What do you think? I think we should do that. And maybe not... Whoa, this little engine is powerful. I'm used to like the really slowly accelerating upper stages from the real, real solar system game. But this is all a little bit quicker, which is nice. Oh man, I may have actually um, overcooked, the, undercooked this orbit. Um like turning too early. We're still in the atmosphere and we're currently um, heating the pod. 
Let's try and do a little atmospheric barbecue roll. We're actually sinking. This is not great. Maybe we have to downgrade the mission from like a um, a landing to a flyby, or maybe we have to first like downgrade it to a rescue mission. Like, please don't die. Let's 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 ascend out of the atmosphere and not toast the capsule. That kind of mission. Uh, we'll take it as we go and see where we where we end up. I think the I reckon the atmosphere here ends at about 70 kilometers, same as Kerbin. So we just need to establish a little bit more vertical velocity, and that should see us safely through. I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope. All right, we're we're ascending now at over 100 meters per second. The capsule, or what is actually getting toasted here? Is it the capsule? Is it the science equipment? Is it everything inside? Uh, and now, oh yeah, I have infinite restarts on the engine, that's good. Um, I was just burning in a completely random direction. Got a lot of agility from the reaction wheels. These, these spacecraft are a joy to fly. Boom, engine on. Here we go. This is looking better already. You know, I'm making the same mistake. Apoapsis is just 62 kilometers, that's too low. Let's try and at least shoot for like 75, okay? I'm gonna burn up all the fuel here in the upper atmosphere, not getting anything done. I don't know how this is happening, you guys. I'm sorry, Dubrovnik Contracting. Probably butchering your name as well. Well, it's like the least I can do right here. Um, yeah, now we have an apoapsis. Now we're just gonna do it the KSB way and wait until we are at that apoapsis and then burn to circularize our wonderful magnificent orbit let's see if the atmosphere is actually ending at 70 kilometers or at 70 kilometers now can we do the actual big time warp yeah so it is just straight up 70 kilometers just like Kerbin all right that's good to know now we can stay stay on the lookout for a moonrise and an apoapsis wait is that a moon it could be a moon no, that's just a part of the skybox. Or it could be a moon. It's like that moon is like incredibly. Can we see this thing? I could see it in the map view. Let me. Oh yeah, look at that. There it is. Or it's another skybox. Anyway, we're gonna go for it. I'm gonna try and get an intercept. I'm trying to get to Iota, and I'm gonna fly from the map view for a little bit here because. Well, I just don't know what altitude this moon is at. It's at 27,000 kilometers. Really? That's like so close. That's like four times the radius of the Earth. Close. That's 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 really close. <laughs> you should be able to make that. Like the Earth, if you draw, if you drew the real solar system and just the real life Earth in here, it'd be like this big. So this moon is more like the space station than than the moon no and the space station is like right next to the earth but you get what i mean it's it's not really far the inclination is fine we are going to explore iota i can't imagine us not managing that somehow or am i misreading this it's you know it's 27000 kilometers it's not more um by the way if we were to run out of fuel. Do we have an escape plan for Valentina? Um, our periapsis is 82 kilometers. Uh, she'll have to go out and push with her jetpack. Can she go out? Yeah, she can go out. We did research EVA, so yeah, we do have an escape plan. If we run out of fuel, we put on our big boy pants, even though she's a girl, and push the spacecraft home. Yeah, that sounds like a plan. All right, we're at three kilometers per second, and I have a feeling we are about to explode out. Oh, I can throttle in this one as well. That's good. All right. Let's try and explore here, see where that takes us. This happens. Oh, yeah, we, we have like the basic... Um, tracking station so we don't get we don't get we don't get uh, timers on the on the map screen we don't get maneuver nodes for iota and all that kind of good stuff 
So we just have to eyeball everything. And I think I may have made my orbit too small because the moon is happening. Oh, we might still be, it might still be happening, although we're going to fall back. Yeah, 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 stop, stop, stop. Whoa, that was sudden. All right, we are at Iota. There is Gale, still comfortably close. We're at a thousand kilometers over Iota. Ooh, there she is, the first glimpse of this new world. It looks interesting, that's for sure. Let's um, let's make for it. Our our total orbital speed is 300 meters per second. So at least establishing an orbit and exploring the surface sh from close by the surface should be possible. I think we're gonna forego the landing for now, or at least like ascertain how much weight there is on this on this thing. Um, let's first do our science though. We have lots of science to do here. Crew report, keep that. We have a log thermometer. Can we transmit this? No. So we're going to keep that. We're going to log the pressure data. Ooh. And we're going to hold off on the one time use experiments. Alright, we have an EVA report. We're going to take this data. We're going to take this data. We're also going to take this data and then we're going to go back in. Alright, now we're going to burn our engines and we're going to fly from the map view again. How's our fuel? Right, we still have loads of fuel. The orbit is... Whoa, this orbit is like super slow. That must mean that IOTA is positively tiny. That means we can probably land on it just fine. Hell, we may even be able to, like, EVA land on it. Alright, let's shrink that a little bit further. So, 10 kilometers. Sounds safe to me. Actually, 10 kilometers might not at all be safe. I don't know this world. Alright, we're gonna approach. We're gonna approach. We're gonna approach at a 1,000 times time acceleration because my god is our speed ever low this thing is this this moon is tiny it's like a martian moon it's like like phobos or dimos or something it's like i'm going 200 meters per second and i am only 150 kilometers over the surface i'm like so incredibly slow this, this weighs as much as like a good chunk of Swiss cheese. It's like a foam moon. Which is good because I think, ladies and gentlemen, um, the landing is back on the table. So we're at 370 meters at our periapsis. Uh, 370 meters per second. Let's have let's have a quick estimate. Do we have engineer? We don't have engineer enabled here. Let's do a quick estimate on our our delta V reserves. We light the engine. Uh, we have to be pointed retrograde. We're gonna light the engine and burn it for like three fuel units and see how much meters per second that gives us. And then we'll ignore the entire rocket equation and estimate from there. Uh, wait, have to 370 starting point. Burning three units of fuel. Three. And that's like 25 meters per second. So we've got four times three units of fuel. 40 times three units of fuel. Times 25 is a kilometer per second. We'll f we're fine. We're going to establish orbit. Here we go. We're actually just going to go ahead and land. Um, no, I kind of want to land here. Because that's in the daylit side. I am currently still approaching apoapsis. So I can burn this a little bit harder to reduce this altitude further. Yeah, and then we're just going to land here somewhere. And before we do the landing, we're going to grab some science from low orbit. Observe the goo. Got that. Observe the materials bay. Ooh, 75. It's, it's going to become important to recover this because, my god, this is a lot. Anyway, this moon is going to be really safe to land on because if everything is going to go wrong, Valentina can just jump outside and land with her jetpack. So that's great. 
um, Valentina, go outside. You have some janitorial duties to perform. Of course, also please observe the EVA. Oh shit, we've got biomes to take care of. Take the data. Take the data. Take the data. Don't lose it. You're carrying a lot of stuff. Ooh, we're going to have to do an EVA as well to take this data. Collect data. Yes. Confirm. Collect data. Confirm. Whoa, there's hundreds of sciences here. All right, back into the spaceship you go. This, this landing is going to be interesting, though, because there's no landing legs. There's no... There's no stable structure. It's going, just going to be a big cigar crashing to the ground. The ground is fairly shallow and brownish. It's... I wonder what this moon is made of. Alright, we are currently at said moon. And I think this looks like a decent... This looks like a decent landing site. And I can see the planet, so that, that will help with getting home. Uh, not really, but... You know, it's a nice thought. All right, we've got 130 units of fuel. We've we're gonna we had like a kilometer per second. We spent 200. We're gonna spend another 400. So that leaves with about f another 400 to get back to Earth. And we we can cheat and use um we can cheat and use some jetpack fuel to to actually get back. And otherwise, we have a goal for episode three. Uh, which will then be a rescue episode. Oh, jolly good. Here we go. We're time warping down because the gravity is too feeble to rely on. Oh, I like the texture of this moon. All right, we're at six-ish kilometers. I think, it's a, I think it's about time to start breaking a little bit more better. Let's go down to 50 meters per second. Let's estimate the mass of this thing. Let's, we're going to count. Like from 65, like 21, 23, 24, 25. So that's like 5-ish seconds estimated by yours truly and less than 5 meters per second of acceleration. That makes 1 meter per second squared or less at ground level of this moon. Um, which makes the, the mass of this moon officially tiny. That's that's interesting indeed. I think it may even be. No, it's not. It's not lighter than Minmus, because Minmus is like, that's really like docking rather than landing. I must not forget. I can throttle this engine. I must also not forget to not ruin this rocket by landing it too hard on the engine. All right, we have our shadow to help. Gauge us, gauge our descent. We're gonna kiss our shadow. Oh no, shadow, where are you going? All right, a little bit of throttle. We do have SAS, our electric charge. We can we can go outside for a really quick hop, but as soon as the electric charge is gonna run out of this thing, I don't think it will stay upright. What I'm saying is, it will require the electric, uh, will, will require the SAS to to stay upright. That of course requires electric, which is gonna run out because we don't have solar panels, reactors, or anything. All right, trying to do a really, really, really gentle, loving, touchy, feely landing here. All right, it's it's all on the SAS now. We're landed. We're landed. We're landed. We're 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 falling. We're not falling. Can the SAS deal with this without my input? I'm not I'm not touching the controls now, so we've got like a balancing stick. I'm going to quickly observe. I'm still not controlling this. I'm still not controlling this. I think the SAS will be able to, to keep it upright. But it's gonna be a close thing whether I can get Valentina out and um out into the surface and back in before it, it terminally runs out. But we've got to try, right? So, EVA, there you go. Did we have this EVA report yet? Uh, yeah, we have it stored. Oh no! What's the SES not doing? No! Come on, survive, survive. It survived. Alright, that's a problem. That's a definite problem. Oh god. 
all important question problem side one all important question is can the SAS SAS raise this thing up again EVA report from the surface check I hope it can because this was a good mission so far also the engine gimbals oops Valentina's toppling over the engine gimbals we may we may be able to to escape still all right we're gonna try and escape we have charge it just the SES just went oh it doesn't have SES it was the pilot skill it was Valentina doing that yeah of course it wouldn't wouldn't do it then let's see we need to plot an escape course back to Gale if we just burn straight for it that's not gonna be so good we'll end up in an orbit that goes like that and then we can make a better course so yeah for now burning straight for it is a good way to get off the ground unfortunately our rocket is oriented in the wrong direction look at that there's a little slope we may be able to use that okay first order of business getting this into the air try one using the SAS no not working all right important decision time do we either oh we have lots of speed records and stuff that gave us money great uh, we can try two things in my mind we can give it the full throttle immediately and try to spend as little time on the ground as possible or we can give it a little bit of throttle and try to use the gimbal to get us off the ground I'm gonna go with that all right SAS on it wasn't on before no all right gimbal enabled throttle I didn't collect the science yet. If these things are going to explode, I want to have the science from them. Oh well, science is secondary now. We need to we need to get Valentina home. All right, throttle. All it's not doing it. No. Oh no. That that went wrong immediately. It all exploded. It's like everything is gone maybe accept that experiment all right um no panicking no panicking valentina still has her thing her capsule that's still a mission somehow um we did get zero science points from this because um there was no radio all right let's go outside and assess the damage Yes, the assessment has been made. Oh, we can't externally do this. All right. The assessment has been made. There is a lot of damage. And Valentina is a pilot. So, what's ah, what which which button is going to say collect the data? This one and this one all right there's a lot of damage then that's that's been assessed let's let's see if we can get the data from from that canister over there obviously we need a rescue mission now that's that's just plain and simple that's just plain and simple collect the data remove the data yes and now we're going to chill in the capsule first kerbal stranded it's like the second mission oh well shouldn't have gotten greedy with the science and gone outside then it's my own fault it's my own fault the contractor will not get sued over this probably look at that there's the home world are we on like any special plane no, no we'll be able to get there we'll be able to get there for now let's leave Valentina here we will be back for you promise promise you have a lot of science after all Let's return to the space center and see what we can purchase with all this money we have. Because there's no extra science for next episode. Uh, so no extra... Oh, we've got a bit of extra science from all the... Um, from all the milestones. Is there something we can get with 30? No, there's nothing we can get with 30. Oh, there's hundreds in that capsule. Um, we can, however, get this one. A lot more parts for you guys. Ooh, but that's like costing all the money we have let's see do we have some contracts that we can do explore gale rendezvous two vessels in orbit of gale yeah that is super easy 
All right, I know what we're going to do. I know what we're going to do. Science data from space around Gale. We're going to accept a couple of these contracts. We can have two, by the way. So we're going to get... Ooh, this one. We can just, like, accept this one. But then we don't have the slot. So we're going to accept this after... Um, but we're going to accept this before we return Valentina at some point. All right, so we still have another contracted vessel made by Greiswolf Corporation. We're going to get this. I hope it has an antenna. Oh, shit. It may not have an antenna. You don't put an antenna on a 30-part craft. Ooh, snap. So we're... Ah! Anyway, we're going to get this one anyway. I hope it has an antenna. Click, and we're going to get... Rendezvous two vessels in orbit of Gale. Park two vessels next to each other. We should be able to do that. And we'll get um, 32 grand, 20 grand, and 11 now. All right, we're going to accept that. And we're going to now, let's check out our second vessel. This was also intended to go to IOTA, the Lupulus Hibernicus, the second. But it's now going to serve as our... Oh, look at that. It's got three boosters. And it's got an antenna, too. Oh yeah. All right, we're going to launch this one. It's 18,000. So afterwards we can still yeah, we can still upgrade the vehicle assembly building. We're going to launch this one and let's see. It's Jebediah, sure. Why the hell not? Um there we go. I'm not paying enough attention to this beautiful vessel, I don't think. This one has fins and boosters and and a small landing stage. I wonder if this one is more efficient than the other one. I could have looked at the Kerbal Engineer. But it didn't. Anyway, on back to the plan. What we're going to do. We're going to park this one in orbit. It's going to get science for that contract to make some money. And it's going to wait there. It's going to wait in orbit until the next episode. So the challenge for the next episode. The challenge after this challenge of not incinerating Jebediah on the way up. The challenge for the next episode is going to be to build a ship with the new part limit, which is like practically infinite, like 255. Holy shit, Jebediah, that's like toasting. Um, wozers. The challenge is to build a ship that can accomplish the following mission profile. First, ascend to orbit, rendezvous with this ship. Um, we'll finish that contract. Pick up Jebediah from this ship. Just because. And then move to IOTA, collect Valentina, and then return all three Kerbals home. I reckon this should be possible with, um, with the parts and the technology we currently have at our disposal. It may not be possible with the cash we currently have at our disposal, but we will get some more of that. Don't worry about the cash too much. If, um, if, if I have to, I will, I will cheat some extra cash in. But... Oh shit, let's actually... This, this one is flying a, a, a way different. It's got so much speed from the initial ascent. Uh, my apoapsis is already like really high at 223 kilometers. I'm just going to wait until I get there. So, mission profile for the next episode is Rendezvous with Greiswolf, uh, with Jebediah, in the Greiswolf spaceship. Rendezvous with Greiswolf. Pick him up. That's optional, actually. If you want to build one with just two capsules to return Valentina, that's fine, too. Um, pick up Jebediah. And then take the two of them to IOTA to rescue Valentina. I think that's a good a good objective for the next episode. Let's first get this guy into orbit and then this will have run for long enough. Yeah, Apoepsis of 230 kilometers. A little bit high for Gale standards, but decent for rendezvous. If you're too low, you don't have the wiggle room. Oh shit, I actually ordered up a rendezvous without having the tech to plan for one. That's going to be, like, heavy on my manual piloting skills. Alright, I hope I'm up to the challenge. I'll probably, it'll be fine, this planet's small. Um, there we go, ditching the first stage and just finishing that orbit. Ooh, the plane matching maneuver might be difficult, though. Ah, anyway, it will be a nice challenge. I'll do a ma manual rendezvous. See if I still got my KSP chops. We are in orbit, not, not quite yet, but nearest makes no difference. Yes, we are in orbit. Not that inclined. Looking pretty good. 
All right, let's transmit some science for that contract then. I have a crew report, transmit that home. Let's have a look. Have two different vessels in orbit of Gale within visual range and kill their relative velocity to achieve this goal. Oh, the, oh, this is going to be a nice challenge because there's like no relative velocity indicators because I can't select a target. It's going to be all visual. All right. Yeah, I'm up for that challenge. Cool. So we have the docking target in orbit here. We've got Valentina on IOTA. And the challenge, as I said, is to build a vessel that can collect all these kerbals and get them home again safely. I feel this is a great challenge. Let me know what you think about that. Hope to see you hope to see your submissions soon. And for now, thanks for watching and have a great evening or whatever time of day it may be. Oh yeah, do click like, subscribe, all those things. They help me out and make me feel like a happy, happy man. Goodbye.